for uh, actually leading off this debate. Um, clearly, he has highlighted a whole series of analysis that actually came up with respect after 45 minutes with no solution. And I think when we bring forward a debate on which I know of no other issue that creates such emotion amongst the Indian and Pakistani communities of this country than the position of Jammu and Kashmir. When that comes forward, it is, it is important for us as elected representatives to debate those issues and represent those views. So I stand quite unavowed as a friend of India to defend both India's position in this conflict and to defend the people who were ethnically cleansed from Kashmir. And I think it's quite ironic that uh, my, the Honourable Member who led the debate gave a very balanced view about the whole position. It's a shame that uh, his own website only portrays one version of the position rather than of having a balanced view in the first place. So I think it is quite clear that we have a duty and a right to debate these particular issues that are uh, so emotional to so many of our people. I think we uh, are clear, however, as the Honourable Member for Brent North uh, alluded, that it is absolutely under the bilateral agreement, the similar agreement, for India and Pakistan to resolve whatever they decide. It is not for Great Britain or any other country to intrude on the matters that are uh, pertinent to them. But let us be clear, just as we are commemorating the anniversary, ironically, of 9-11, one of the most terrible uh, ter terrorist atrocities, and we send, I think, our, our sympathies to the victims and the families of those victims for those terrorist atrocities, that every single day in Kashmir, along the line of control, terrorists, state-sponsored terrorists from Pakistan are infiltrating Jammu and Kashmir and causing atrocities. And we must mark that and say that the Pakistani government clearly cannot be trusted to do what they should do and stop the terrorism on the people of Jammu and Kashmir. It is the, clearly, it is ironic that tunnels, underground tunnels have been discovered just recently that promote that infiltration and quite clearly has been assisted by the Pakistani forces that occupy part of Kashmir. The role of the Indian Army is quite clear and I think one of the things I would like to hear from the Minister today is what aid uh, the United Kingdom will offer to the victims of flooding in Kashmir and assistance that we stand ready to give uh, for those poor victims and of course our sympathies must go to all those victims uh, that they have uh, suffered. But I have a solution to the particular issue. And that is that we should remember the history, the long history of this conflict. When partition took place, and the United Kingdom obviously clearly had the role of partitioning uh, India and Pakistan, it created a partition which was never going to last. The concept of East and West Pakistan uh, as one country, separated by India, was never going to stand the test of time, and clearly didn't, and Bangladesh came from it. But equally, the Maharaja decided to cede the territory to India. The Pakistani government and the Pakistani forces refused to accept that decision and invaded. And it was at the behest then of the Maharaja that the Indian army moved in to try and wrest control back, as was originally the, the purpose. So let's be clear, that's 1947. We can therefore go through the rest of the history over the last uh, 70 years, or 60 or 70 years, of what has happened in this conflict and say it is, a, it is terrible that it has continued but it's quite clear where the responsibility lies for that conflict and we must place that fairly and squarely in the behest of the Pakistanis and their successive governments. Now, I won't give way because we don't have uh, uh, injury time on, uh, uh, to, to, to have that. As has been mentioned, we have a democracy within Jammu and Kashmir in actual fact, we have a predominant Muslim majority in Jammu and Kashmir. They voted overwhelmingly in the elections, as the Honourable Member for Brent North uh, put, and they came up with a decisive result. It may not be the result that everyone wants. However, it was a decisive result. And quite clearly, we should not be. And one of the issues I think is right about this, we should, of the Maharaja, that the Indian army moved in to try and wrest control back 
as was originally the, the purpose. So let's be clear, that's 1947. We can therefore go through the rest of the history over the last uh, 70 years, or 60 or 70 years, of what has happened in this conflict and say it is, a, it is terrible that it has continued, but it's quite clear where the responsibility lies for that conflict. And we must place that fairly and squarely in the hat behest of the Pakistanis and their successive governments. Now, I won't give away because we don't have uh, uh, injury time on, uh, uh, to, to, to have that. As has been mentioned, we have a democracy within Jammu and Kashmir. In actual fact, we have a predominant Muslim majority in Jammu and Kashmir. They voted overwhelmingly in the elections, as the Honourable Member for Brent North uh, put, and they came up with a decisive result. It may not be the result that everyone wants. However, it was a decisive result. And quite clearly, we should not be. And one of the issues I think is right about this, we should, when we debate these issues, just as Jammu and Kashmir are about to go to the polls, the risk is that we inflame tensions between the various different communities. So I think we should understand the, the position of the various different groups in Jammu and Kashmir. The Shia Muslims do not support the right for self-determination. The Gujars and Bakarwalas do not support it. The Buddhists don't support it. The Hindi Dogras do not support it. The Kashmiri Pandits do not support it. Sikhs and Christians do not support it. So the only issue is that the, some part of the Muslim population do support it, but they are actually a minority. So the clear point here is that far from being a position whereby the majority of the population is, uh, to, to, uh, is wanting succession either to Pakistan or as a separate state, far from it. The position now is that the vast majority of people within that state want to remain part of India. So I have a, a solution uh, to the problem, and that is that the Pakistani forces illegally occupying part of Kashmir should leave and unite Jammu and Kashmir as one state under the auspices of India and then determine what happens. Equally, it, is, it would be absolutely ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous that the, the Hindu pandits who were forced out in a process of ethnic cleansing 700,000 is the reports that I hear of those people still living in refugee camps, forced out. So you reward those that ethnically cleanse by then saying, well, I won't give way, uh, that reward those people that ethnically cleanse by saying, we get rid of all the people that might vote the wrong way, and then we have a plebiscite. Absolutely absurd uh, to represent it in that sort of way. So I take the view of saying that there are humanitarian areas in this conflict that need to be uh, concluded. The people that are, are, of course, the victims are the pandits who were forced out of their homes, the women who were forced to convert from Hinduism to Islam at, at the point of a gun, and they were left uh, to, to suffer accordingly. Then we should be clear that the position is that when you look at the populations that exist within Jammu and Kashmir, they trust the secular state of India, which of course has a growing Muslim population, a Sikh population, a Christian population, to actually administer uh, their country, rather more than a Pakistani uh, uh, administration, which is predominantly Muslim, and any minority groups in Pakistan, Hindus, Christians, Sikhs and others, are deliberately persecuted in Pakistan and therefore suffer at the hands of the particular government of the day. So, it is now some 25 years since we had the uh, uh, worst atrocities in the Kashmir Valley and, uh, and the, the uh, Hindus were driven out uh, by the Islamic fundamentalists. We should be on the side of those people that have suffered and make sure that those people who are in exile have the right to return to the homes with which they've occupied literally for centuries. And without doubt, that is the way that we should uh, uh, be positioning ourselves in saying, and I look forward to the Minister saying this, that we stand as a country full square behind the Indian government and the Indian army in ensuring that there is peace and stability within the region. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Holliday, and I shall be relatively brief. Not not least because so much of what I wanted to say um, in this debate has already been 
um, express them far more eloquently than um, I could um, hope to do. Um, and also, I too am very chided by my honourable friend, the member for Wolverhampton South West, being a um, white middle-aged male. I wouldn't say middle-aged. Well, I, I wouldn't say middle-aged either. Um, <laughs> But I, but I, but I, get, I get the gist. Um, and I also have to say, I was, I, I've had the, uh, the great pleasure of listening to a number of speeches in this house from uh, um, the Honourable Gentleman, the Member for Brent North. And uh, I, think, I think that was the, the best speech I've get, um, ever heard him give over many years. Not least, I think, because um, he quoted so approvingly by a, um, a, great, a great Tory philosopher and statesman, yeah, and I yeah, think yeah, perhaps yeah. if he wanted to improve generally the tone of his speeches in the chamber, he should quote approvingly from our great hist uh, Tory historical figures at greater yeah, length yeah, in the future. But I understand the emotions that this debate um, has gives rise to. Um, and first, let, let me say, I think everyone here agrees that human rights abuses, wherever they are committed, wherever in the world, um, by, ever, by whomever they are committed, um, will never be condoned by anyone, I think, certainly in this uh, debate, um, and I believe in this House. And we all want um, Kashmir to live in peace and prosperity. However, I think there is a difference between us and those of us who are much more concerned that actually the British legacy in India means that we should tread much more carefully when in seeking to express views, let alone intervene in the internal politics of that great democracy, um, than those who seem to presume that we somehow have some enduring um, legacy that, we, that gives us the right to uh, interfere. I think actually British um, insertion into what I see as an absolutely explicit, explicit um, domestic uh, issue for India and Pakistan is deeply, deeply unhelpful um, and that we should be very, very mindful um, not to insert ourselves. And I certainly have to say, with all the greatest respect to my uncle friend for Burton, I certainly see, in as much as I see no role for uh, the United Kingdom here, I certainly see no role for the United States either. <coughs> um, and unlike many other people who have spoken at this debate, um, um, very, um, in a very informed way. I'm not an expert on Jammu and Kashmir. I, 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 although I've um, visited India many times, I haven't visited that region. However, in, uh, in my time um, in government, I was privileged to get to know um, a tremendous politician who's actually a former chief minister of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, my former opposite number in the Indian government under the previous administration, uh, Mr. Farooq Abdullah. Um, and I think it's just wrong to pretend that somehow uh, that people from Jammu and Kashmir aren't actually playing a vibrant role within the life of the world's biggest and greatest democracy. Um, and I think we do need to remind ourselves, I know others have mentioned it already, that the recently concluded Indian elections were the largest exercise in democracy in the history of the world. But 550 million free Indians including 7 million from Jammu and Kashmir, voted in peaceful elections and witnessed orderly transition of power to a new government with a new vision. And that is something that we shouldn't cease to celebrate. And as we look around at uh, the globe with so many troubles and so much strife, we really must make sure that we praise and single out the triumph of humanity like the uh, uh, democracy uh, in India. And elections for the uh, Legislative Assembly of the State of Jammu and Kashmir, um, as I said earlier, had a turnout in 2008 of over 61%. That's significantly higher than in presidential elections in the United States. Um, and I certainly expect that there will be a very substantial turnout um, in, um, in, the, in the coming elections later this year. Um, it is also worth reminding ourselves that the place that we're discussing is not like, is, you know, this isn't England. Um, this is, um, yes, a beautiful part of the world, but it's also a very different part of the world. India's land border with Pakistan in that state is 1,200 kilometres long. Um, and jihadi elements and terrorists are being infiltrated into India from Pakistan as part of a uh, terror campaign. Um, and that, in that border is porous and does need to be protected. And it's not simply there 
to intimidate, they are there to protect the integrity of that, not just Jammu and Kashmir, but the whole um, of the uh, Indian nation, which has been the subject of vile terrorist attacks, um, just as we in the West and here in the UK and obviously on 9-11, we remember particular attacks on the United States have been. And so it is important that we're around the world, wherever democracies stand uh, up against terrorism, that we stand shoulder to shoulder with them. So um, I don't want to um, labour uh, the points any further, but just to say, I understand that members wish to speak up in defence of their constituents and articulate the concerns, particularly of those who are of, of uh, Kashmiri uh, origin. But we must look forward, not back. We must be mindful of India in the 21st century, not looking back to a role that we may have played in the 20th century. And it is forging that new relationship, firmly looking to the future, um, that we should concern ourselves with here in Westminster and not in the internal affairs of that great democracy. Thank you.